Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a demonstration of how you can perform a one-way multivariate analysis of variance using IBM SPSS. A one-way MANOVA is performed when you have a single categorical independent variable and two or more dependent variables that are treated as continuous. Essentially what you're testing is whether there are significant group differences on a set of dependent variables. So for this demonstration, we have simulated student data, uh, and this is data that I've used in other videos. The independent variable is going to be student socioeconomic status, and this variable is coded one for low, two for medium, and three for high. And we're going to be comparing students uh, varying in their socioeconomic uh, status or levels on a set of dependent variables, achievement, mastery goals, interest, and anxiety. Now before I actually perform the analysis, let me note a, a couple of things. First off, this demonstration is part of a PowerPoint that I have linked underneath the video description. That PowerPoint actually contains two examples, this being one, um, and then there's also coverage of assumptions related to MANOVA, so be sure to download it to check it out. Also, the data set for this presentation as well as the data for the other uh, demonstration in the PowerPoint are linked as well. So again, be sure to check those out. Next, I want to note that there are various possible approaches for following up uh, a significant multivariate ANOVA result. Uh, one possible approach is to follow up using univariate ANOVAs, and that's actually the default approach in SPSS, but there are other approaches such as discriminant analysis or step-down analysis. Those approaches are not covered in this particular video, but they are covered in the PowerPoint. So I'm just going to be focusing mainly on interpretation of the standard uh, MANOVA results uh, when you're running the MANOVA in SPSS. So let's go ahead and perform our analysis. So what I'm going to do is go to the, uh, click on Analyze, go down to General Linear Model, and then go to Multivariate. When I click on that, I'm going to move my independent variable to the fixed factors box and my dependent variables, achievement, mastery goals, interest, and anxiety to the dependent box. Next, I'll click on options and uh, select descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and power, uh, and also homogeneity tests. We'll click on continue, and then estimated marginal means, I'll click on that button and select the overall as well as the uh, estimated marginal means uh, by SES level, so I'll move that over as well, and click on continue. Uh, as I said before, the default in SPSS is to follow up the MANOVA results with univariate ANOVAs, so if you want to follow those up with post hoc tests, you can do so by clicking the post hocs button. You can move your independent variable over to the uh, post hoc test 4 box and select two keys or any of the other tests that you uh, want to select, and we'll click on continue. Uh, under plots, we can get uh, either a line chart or bar chart. I'm just going to select the bar chart and with the uh, confidence interval uh, bar, so I'm going to select uh, SES level, move it over to the horizontal axis box, click on add, and then I'm going to select bar chart right here and then include error bars there. So next we'll click on continue and then OK and this will give us our output. So let me blow this up a bit and we'll kind of walk through it. And again let me note that uh, this output is provided in the PowerPoint along with uh, sort of a running commentary. But you'll see right here we've got the, the uh, descriptive statistics. Uh, you basically have the mean standard deviations and sample sizes. Uh, for each group associated with each dependent variable. So you can see that, for instance, that um, the low SES uh, level group, uh, their mean achievement uh, score was 3.06. Uh, the medium group, it was 3.03. .03. The high group was 4.2187, and so forth. So you can use the descriptives to sort of describe uh, the mean differences um, for each of the dependent variables. When we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have boxes tests uh, of equality of covariance matrices. So the assumption um, is essentially that the relation, the variances and the covariances among the dependent variables um, are essentially equal across groups. So that's an assumption of the multivariate ANOVA uh, tests. 
And so if, there, if this assumption is not met, then this can produce an inflation in type 1 or type 2 error, just depending on the nature of that assumption. So we can assess that by looking at BOX's test results. And you can see right here we have a p-value that's given, which is 0.986 for this particular um, analysis. So if this is non-significant, then that would be an indication that we have equality of uh, variance covariance matrices. So that assumption uh, would appear to be met. And so based on that, we would then feel uh, a little bit more confident in the trustworthiness of our multivariate test results that are produced down here. So kind of scrolling down a little bit further, let's look at our multivariate test. So you can see we have the name of our independent variable right here. And you can see that we have four different types of multivariate tests. Um, and so, you know, each of them sort of provides a little bit of a, a different lens for assessing group differences on the set of dependent variables. One of the more commonly uh, reported multivariate tests is Wilkes Lambda. So I'm going to focus in on this. And right here, you got the Wilkes Lambda value. There's a F value. Um, degrees of freedom hypothesis, uh, error degrees of freedom, and then you've got the p-value that's given right here. And so if this is uh, indicating significance as it is right here, that would be an indication that the students are differing significantly uh, on the set of dependent variables. In other words, students falling at different SES levels appear to be different on the set of our dependent variables. Let me just note that by default, you'll see the point zero 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 sometimes. Um, and this is just rounded off to three decimal places. But if you want a more precise p-value, you, you can just uh, click in here and essentially kind of highlight. And you can see there's the exact p-value that's given, which is 0 .0004. Uh, but typically, people would just report uh, that p would be less than 0 .001. You also see that we have the partial eta squared value that's given right here. Uh, you know, Cohen's rules of thumb for judging small, medium, and large effects uh, using eta squared for uh, when, you're, when you're working with the uh, social and behavioral sciences is uh, 0 0.01 would be an indicator of a small effect, 0 0.06 for medium effect, and 0 0.14 or above would be an indication of a large effect. So, you know, we're falling between essentially medium and large effect using those rules of thumb. And then you can see right here we have the observed power that's given. Uh, scrolling down, you'll see that now we have two sets of boxes. We have uh, the tests of between subjects effects. And these are essentially the univariate ANOVAs. And if you look right here, you've got the independent variable, and then each of the dependent variables uh, from our MANOVA is given right here. And so these are basically univariate ANOVAs comparing the groups on each separate dependent variable. So it's this, these are ignoring the intercorrelations among the dependent variables that were taken into account when we ran the MANOVA. So you can see right here we've got our F tests that are given. So we have right here we have our F value and P value that's given right here. There's our partial eta squared. This is uh, comparing the groups on the achievement variable right here. So you can see that there are significant differences between groups on achievement. And uh, this would be a, a pretty uh, large effect. Uh, comparisons of the groups on mastery goals, you can see that there are no significant differences uh, among the groups on mastery goals. On the interest variable, there are significant differences. Uh, there would be some indication of a medium effect here. And then comparison of the groups on anxiety, there are no significant differences. Now, the other box I was referring to is uh, th this box up here with Levine's test of equality of error variances. And so essentially, um, you know, as with the standard univariate ANOVA, these tests would all make the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So the Levine's tests are essentially uh, the test for homogeneity of variances for the univariate um, ANOVAs that we were looking at down here. So basically, you know, if we're looking at this first row right here, you can see there are no significant differences uh, between the groups in terms of the variances on achievement. Um, no differences among the groups with, uh, on uh, mastery goals in terms of the variances. No differences in variances among the groups on uh, the, let's see here, the uh, interest variable right here. And then no differences among the groups with respect to the anxiety variable right here. So these are the p-values that are given. And so 
uh, as we interpreted uh, Box's test above, if we find that uh, the p-value is less than, say, 0 0.05, uh, that would be an indication that there are significant differences in the variances across groups, which would be a violation of the assumptions related to these tests down here. But that does not appear to be a problem as we're looking at our results. So overall, at this point, we have evidence of a significant multivariate effect that's given by um, our test, our Wilkes Lambda test um, right here. And then looking at the test of between subjects effects, we have evidence of group differences with respect to achievement and our interest variables. When we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have our post hoc tests. And, uh, so you can see that we have essentially Tukey's post hoc test where we are comparing low versus medium and low versus high and medium versus high on each of our dependent variables. So you can see for the uh, achievement variable, when we compare low versus medium, there's no significant difference between uh, the low and medium SES groups with respect to achievement. When we compare low versus high, we see that there is a significant difference. The mean difference is uh, essentially computed by taking the mean from the I uh, category right here and subtracting the mean from the uh, J uh, category right here. So essentially this negative value is indicating that uh, those individuals who were in the low SES group performed lower on average with respect to student achievement, and, and significantly so. When we look at uh, comparison between the medium and high group, we also see a significant difference. This negative um, uh, sign right here is indicating that students who were in the medium group scored lower on achievement than those in the high group. When we look at um, our mastery dependent variable, uh, you can see that none of the comparisons um, are statistically significant. So when we look at low versus medium, no difference. Low versus high, no difference. Medium versus high, we see no difference. Uh, with respect to interest, you can see uh, there's no difference between low versus medium or low versus high. Uh, but we do see a difference between the medium and high SES groups with respect to interest. So there's a p-value right there. It's 0 0.018. And that uh, negative value right there is indicating basically that uh, students who were uh, medium in SES uh, were lower uh, than the on average uh, with respect to interest in those in the high SES group. Uh, with respect to anxiety, you can see that there are no uh, differences among the groups as well. Then as we scroll down, you can see that we have um, our profile plots. These are basically our uh, bar charts that are giving us um, essentially the estimated marginal means as well as 95% confidence intervals uh, for um, our groups uh, by each dependent variable. So this is with respect to achievement, this first one right up here. Uh, the next one is with respect to mastery goals. When we scroll down a little bit further, we get it for the interest variable. And then when we scroll down a little bit further, uh, you'll see that we get it also for the anxiety variable. So that pretty much concludes this walkthrough. As I said before, uh, the PowerPoint that I have linked underneath the video description uh, provides a lot more detail than I was really providing in this video. Um, again, it goes into assumptions in a lot more detail, um, as well as uh, it goes into uh, other options for following up the MANOVA result. And included in that presentation is a discriminant analysis that was used as a follow-up uh, to the results that we found uh, with our multivariate tests uh, in this particular demonstration. So that's it, and I appreciate you watching.